so for the light review this is very Ashton Bill, lighting design house and uh, she is the most prominent lighting designer in the UK for many many years uh, residential architectural and she's going to give us our take a take on uh, the conundrum of specifying um, decorative lighting so Mary how much demand do you have I would like to ask for, re for decorative lighting is it part and parcel of what you offer um, when I'm des designing residential projects the, the decorative light is really really important trying to get clients to understand technique first and then the decorative light is the way I look at it so it's very important but I'm not always there to finally choose for them okay so do you like give them maybe a, a few options or do you just say this is where you should put put them if you give them a layout plan for example you give them an idea and you say you need a pendant here you need a floor light here but leave yeah, the we, final we, decision we talk, we talk about what what they need and where and we'll say look this is a, a great place for a pendant there's a there's a there's a staircase and, and you and we talk about whether or not they want a pendant or whether they want some other way of lighting the staircase then i make a pinterest board I oh, make okay. a, for the private individuals i found pinterest is really really helpful for them for teasing out ideas that they like so that you know i'll make a private pinterest board for each house and then there'll be a section for pendants and a section for wall lights and a section for whatever the technical stuff um and then then that gives them at least somewhere to start from that i feel i can then as a clean conscience say that i've given them a good choice of things which aren't glare free because so many decorative lights you know, I, mean, I was talking to an interior designer friend of mine and a friend of her friends had chosen these clear pendants. And we were trying to think of the best way to explain why a clear pendant <laughs> is you might as well just put a bare bulb in the middle of the space. Yeah. Or at least, so if I was starting, we would start with the pendant, you'd have something that was enclosed or was a coloured glass or something so that at least they've got a good starting point. Yeah, I, I, I think there was a phase where that was, I remember in a company called Acedra, a lot of their products just showed bare bulbs and it was like a trend of the time, I think. And uh, they were just horrible to, they looked really nice because you had like a glass cube or a, and you turned them on and it was just horrible because you just got a face full of glare, like you say. I've, I've lost count of the number of discussions I've had with interior designers and clients private clients about why they shouldn't have a bare bowl um, and sometimes they listen and sometimes they don't. Well that's the nature of the beast isn't it and um, I guess so your approach is quite interesting and it is different to so when when we're talking about concepts I suppose that's where you introduce the idea of pendants and things but after that you don't necessarily uh, follow it through to the final specification you just say look this is a number of things and that's quite common from what i can hear from the lighting design it's, it's only because the, the amount of time involved is is so extensive in um oh, if you actually once you really start looking into okay so we want something a dangly pendant and um you know it needs to have this many lumens i, I, do, I do go to that level um but then they'll they'll go off to some lighting shop or they'll talk to their friend of a friend of a friend and they'll send me a message saying what about this and i'll say oh look, look it's a bare bulb or it's got a really funny lamp holder you're never going to be able to change the bulb or um it's really interesting i love i do love decorative lights you can do so much with it and it's i really like the idea that people should have light in different layers and for different mm. reasons and i'd always normally say that to people you know layers and different so you can at least if you can't afford a dimming system you can switch things on and off absolutely because um, i think a common theme is how you build for it as well um so the other people that i mean i have an option i have an option where they can pay me to advise but not many people take me up on no, it they, it's never ending isn't it yeah, and it I'm, is a never ending story yeah I'm that, that song would be the perfect backdrop actually for this discussion the never-ending story do you remember that yes i do yeah some strange flying beast or something wasn't it with yeah. um, wasn't that david bowie in that or something 
I know my kids used to like, we liked the song particularly, because the song was sung by someone obscure like um, Lamar or someone like that. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. Um, and so when I speak to Holloway's, I, I wonder if they have a concept of how all this works, because as I, as I was about to say, I'm specifying two pendants for a job that I'm working on. And it is the case that the, even finding a sample is very difficult um, because one of the things that I had preconceived about was the availability of the actual products themselves because no one's going to order one sample for a £3,000 pendant or whatever and manufacturers just don't want to do it and uh, there's not the shops nowadays are there you don't have the accessibility to these elements no i mean i i you 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 can try and send people into places and they 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 might see something they like but it, you're very much dependent on what that particular shop has decided to stock um i often say to go to john lewis go to ikea make a short list decide the techniques you like okay that's really interesting because you're really putting the um you're putting the emphasis on the client themselves to do some legwork, really. Well, only because they don't want to pay me to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I love yeah. doing it. And, and I mean, I've worked on, on high-end projects where the interior designer chooses products and then you then you have to make them work or find something. I mean, I've, I can think of a project where the interior designer chose a decorative task light for a, um, a college college offices and it just wasn't man for the job sorry am i allowed to say that even yeah, of course you can yeah or it wasn't probably not I person don't know. for the job <sighs> such a mind um and that's that's so difficult when yeah. when someone chooses something decorative that has a technical job to do so how do your clients react in general to you to your um the way that you work i mean is it and also do you separate the uh, residential from the um, other projects you do, the architectural maybe the yeah, the architectural is different because the interior designer or the architect or whoever it is is who has in, involved involved me will will want my feedback. Is this right? Can this work? They, they, they quite often they'll have chosen a particular style. I've got a client a project at the moment where the interior designer says, so this pendant, it's it's a blackened pearl. That's why I've chosen this pendant. And it's, you know, the least, I, I think to myself, I could find some better blackened pearls than that. <laughs> Plus it sounds quite ghastly, I've got to say. <laughs> oh no, the principle is a good one. No, it, I can think of some that are kind of, it's to do with um, how the, I think it's Red India. Somebody somewhere used to, they used to harvest the oysters and then they would burn them on the fire to release the pearls. Oh, that sounds nice. So then the pearls would become blackened. So it's kind of got a cultural reference. Which, which I'm all about now. I, I like the, um, I mean, the makers and if there's a story behind it, I mean, that's the beauty of decorative That's marketing. lovely, yeah. When there's a story and, the, I mean, I've seen some amazing stuff at Clark and Dog. Clarkenwell Design Week last year. There's some great, you know, designer makers here in the UK of all kinds, using all kinds of materials. And I just think that's that's so exciting. Uh, but I've always tried, I'd love to be able to recommend to clients, there's this range that's definitely made in the UK and the yeah. person who made it really thought about it. And there, there are there are some good people out there, but it's just the right having the client who wants to spend a bit more money on their <clears> decorative yeah it's an oxymoron for something because it there are so um uh they draw you in because they're so interesting a lot of these pendants i mean just look at ingo maura and some things he's done and and then the cost is sort of prohibitive for most people but then you'd have it just for the rest of your life wouldn't you because it's so interesting and so beautiful um which is where I think we should be going for things that we buy. We should think. I about. mean, Ingo Moore is really interesting because he's a cross between. He really did cross over between decorative and technical, didn't he? When mm. he created the Ya Ya Ho and all of those, yeah. You know that really he really crossed a boundary, which I think has 
opened up lots of floodgates and some things have worked better than others. Definitely. Um, I think probably that's enough because, um, yeah, it's interesting. And it's interesting to see how many designers, and I'm not including John in this, uh, do things the way that you do things. Uh, and it may be market okay, economics, no, because we all need to, it's a business at the end of the day. I mean, we, we still have to eat, right? It's all part of the package. <laughs> not to be bland about, but I mean, this. I think lighting designers suffer from this thing where we, like many artists, if you like, we, it's almost considered a fun thing to do, so we shouldn't be charging for certain things, but it's a job. <laughs> so we need, to, um, yeah. we need to back ourselves a bit more for what we're doing, because there's certainly a skill to it. Right, I'll stop this video now. Uh, probably should say goodbye or something. Say goodbye. Don't know okay. if that works on video. Thanks very much, Chris. That's um, really good. No worries. Um, I think maybe we should all have our favourite decorative lights, but then it's so hard. Which one would you? I don't know what I would choose. I have done that piece already. Uh, I sorry I didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're doing another round. Um, we did one with the um, we did one with the designers. We did one with the manufacturers. Maybe we should do it round three. Um, can include you on that. That would be cool. I'd love to know. Well, What's your favourite well, light? What's your favourite decorative light? Mm, yes, hard. The, the Mark Brazier Jones, I think, probably. Okay. Mark Brazier Jones did some with lenses which were exquisite and are like, I think they're sort of thousands of pounds. He doesn't make them anymore, I don't think. Okay, you've got them in your dining room, right? <laughs> Badly, no. Right. <laughs> oh, but I, I've invested more money in Hugh than I have in anything else, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, I'm going to stop the video.